Welcome to another episode of Sanford Says. My name is Lisa Holder, Chief Communications and Cultural Affairs Administrator for the City of Sanford. Today's topic is Hollerbox Oktoberfest, and we have with us today Christina Hollerbach, the CEO of Hollerbach's German Restaurant, and Jennifer Brooks, our Director of Special Events. Welcome. Hello. Yay. Yay. It's, uh, <laughs> it is not October, but there is a reason why, and it's still going on this weekend, and we have some really wonderful details to share with you today, folks. So, Jennifer, do you want to start, or do you want to introduce Christina, say some things from on the city side, or you know what? Christina I, could take over. <laughs> Christina, we could just we could just step away and let Christina talk about all of us. I love talking about myself. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about how wonderful your staff is. You've got a great team. They make the city look good. They make downtown look good. We get phone calls from all over the state looking for hotel rooms. I, I'm sure all the Airbnbs are rented. Um, so I can't tell you how much we're looking forward to this. I wish we could have changed the whole Hurricane Ian thing, but um, your your wonderful staff just turned it on a dime, came up with a new date, and we're moving forward. So bring the party on. Yeah. And I know, like, the change of date, like, it was a very stressful decision, but I am so proud of my staff, too. They're just, mm -hmm. it's always like, what do we have to do to fix this? How, well, you know, what do we got to do? And um, all my vendors were really, really great, too. I think we only lost one entertainer that was other, otherwise booked, but it's been a successful move. And I'm glad that the, you know, city uh, buildings didn't get a lot of water intrusion. Yeah. It was mostly just the roads. And so we were able to, to I hate using the word pivot because it's been the, like, yeah. the, the, the word of the century, yes, um, yes. but just making sure that we can make adjustments and, and make it happen. And now all we're waiting to see if the guests know that those date changes are there, but I'm hopeful that it's going to be a really fun weekend. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Christina, because originally and for many, many years before this, this, your event was in Magnolia Square based and then in the downtown historic district area, commercial mm -hmm. district, and it's changed. And so for those listening who may not have realized that, that's the impact that the storm had because it was along the waterfront that we had some flooding. And so, uh, and it was now, it was at the Civic Center yeah, previous so years. Last year was the first year we did the Civic Center. And um, obviously like being close to the restaurant was a priority when we initially had the festival, but it really outgrew that space very quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a three-day festival, which is a little unusual in Sanford. We don't have many multi-day street closure events. <laughs> um, and the impact that it creates for our other business partners, uh, especially the Ritz Theater, um, was a little too high. So we you know, contemplated different ways to go. And the Civic Center, I, I thought, was perfect because we you know, kind of have this beautiful waterfront that, <laughs> that is a little <laughs> underutilized. Um, so being able to kind of make that the backdrop of this event and in Germany, like obviously, like Munich is the, the place to go for Oktoberfest. But there's, you know, they celebrate that all over in small towns. And one of the best compliments I got last year that it reminded them of a German Oktoberfest in like a small, smaller village. Mm -hmm. You know, so they kind of take their town hall and deck it out mm -hmm. and have have a huge party. So um, that was a, a really nice compliment. And it's the first time I'd really seen the Civic Center in that used in that kind of way with well, with the decorations. You guys, you really did transform that building. It it was phenomenal he's what actually great in there vision. right now <laughs> doing, it but what a great day vision <laughs> yeah to see this blank canvas and to turn it in that's a um, real vision so and it was it you're right it was phenomenal our it, city manager kind of uh, i would say has kind of a poker face and it was one mm -hmm. of the first times i've seen him like really react to something he walked into the building it was just like whoa what, you know? <laughs> like, what is going on in here so that was that was pretty cool that you know a building mm -hmm. that you see all the time still made somebody go wow you know so that that's yeah. really exciting yeah, so c tell us some, some details about what's happening this weekend. So we and made a lot of changes even from last year, and I think that's another fun thing about my staff. Like, even if we're having a success successful event and we're enjoying ourselves, we still all got lists on our phones of, like, yeah. oh, well, this isn't working. We should try this next time. And, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have this, like, air of, like, we can always be better. Um, and we took lots of notes from last year, especially because it was the first time we were in this space. And we had holler buck system last year where you buy the bucks and then use those throughout the festival so we don't have to have – cash stations and hold up lines even You've further done that for a long time um, yeah. and that was effective but however it, we had way more people than we anticipated last year and there was a big line congestion with buying the tickets in the first place so you know we've been contemplating you know how do we fix that and of course we live in florida so we're one of the you know entertainment and tourism destinations of the world so we can you know and em emulate things that disney does that universal does 
and we went with the uh, Holler ba- Fest bands this year. So they're NFC readers, so mm-hmm. near field some things. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I forget what the C stands for. Um, so they work without Wi-Fi to connect um, and, and tap. So you would tap your phone, load up on your phone, and then use the band throughout the festival to tap and go. So it's eliminating the I want to buy tickets line. And there's still ways to um, load it up with cash if people don't feel comfortable using their phones and, and, and don't want to do that. There'll still be separate lines for that. But we're hoping that the majority of people will be tech savvy enough to, to tap and, and load and tap and pay. So it'll eliminate some lines and be an interesting experience for people. Um, the guy who's doing it too, it's called Risk Coin, and we're, um, you know, he's based in Canada, but he's like coming down to the festival too, and he's mm-hmm. been really interactive with uh, working with us on the back end of it too. So we're super excited to try out this new system. And um, I think it, it's going to work really well. The, and we did get some cool things for the Civic Center because we either had to buy a temporary network infrastructure to run the system or permanently upgrade the Civic Center. So Thank you we very much. So we actually permanently <laughs> upgraded the, the Civic Center. So we, uh, That's huge. We yes, have, it is you know, huge. Really, it's a huge Wi-Fi radius now around there and um, a really, really awesome system. So when people, other people run the Civic Center, they can choose to have that upgrade and then anyone else who's using it will be able to have some some nice Wi-Fi. So. Wow, thank you to yeah. Hollerbeck's German Restaurant. <laughs> My goodness, that is an incredible new perk there. My it's... marketing director already made a sign that says, you know, Wi-Fi compliments of Hollerbox, yeah. but the Wi-Fi symbol's made out of sausages. <laughs> I'm so excited. So tell me, so it's all about food and drink, right? Yeah. And so an abundance of that. And is there any things that you could share, like what – kind of things you're going to have for people to offer sure. you know, to, and, to participate and we always in. say that like you know we serve gemütlichkeit so it's that sense of fun and the feeling you get with friends and family but it starts over good food and drink and all the beer we have is imported from germany um, we have to talk and meet with our brewers you know a year in advance basically to make sure that we have enough that we can transport it here that we can store it so just the logistics behind getting the beer order which is close to 350 liter kegs <laughs> is uh, is p- quite a task, um, but the food is awesome as well. And uh, Patrick brought back potato pancakes out uh, for our street food. We're doing a whole new kitchen system with a you know giant line. So you've got the currywurst, our bratwurst, the sauerkraut, our potato pancakes, our pretzels with the obatsu cheese spread. And our uh, pastry department, too, is making candied oh apples and cotton candy. So <laughs> we're doing a lot of really fun things this year, and I'm super excited to yeah. see how everybody responds. And not to mention of your awesome deli in yes. downtown Sanford. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's always here as well. And there's so all those things that you're talking about, you can hop in and order things the desserts are incredible well and even like right now i'm wearing uh, my gummy bear glasses because we have a very large haribo selection and you i'm do. a huge fan of haribo we've got so many i like the sour ones on the outside but they're still sweet yeah them. yeah it's just great. a plug for your your um market it's just wonderful but so this is it and sounds like i love I the mean, lodge <laughs> yeah oh that's mm. the whole thing and yes. it's and it's an experience coming to this event it's it so prepare for that you you are transported practically to to Germany when you participate in in the Oktoberfest. How many years now, Christina? Have you well, been doing? Well, we used it? to participate um, as sponsors for a Live After Five. So if you count that, it's almost mm-hmm. been probably ten to fifteen years. But doing it on our own has been about six or seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, how can, where you, where can you get those bracelets? Are you going to it? So when you go online, I guess, can you explain that process? Sure. So. Um, and anyone can visit hollerbox.com slash Oktoberfest and get all the facts they need. And you can pre-order your bands online. You can also pick them up and purchase them inside Outfitters while you also get your German Trachten wear, your Dirndls and Lederhosen. <laughs> um, and those are happening now. But during the festival, Monroe Hall, which uh, is the building right at the corner of Sanford and First Street, will be kind of like our main hub to purchasing the initial band. And um, the band is $5, but it's the charity aspect of it. So it'll cover the cost of the band, but the um, leftovers from that are going to Hollerbox Has Heart Foundation, yeah. which is the recipient of our Oktoberfest. 
and all of those monies go back into the community. We sponsor a lot of other local charities as well as offer um, education and emergency grants for our staff. We actually just issued some mm. for some people who had some major damage from Hurricane Ian. Wonderful. So it's uh, definitely yeah. you know, hitting all the points for, for me there and uh, it's going to be are. really easy I think for people to, to load up and there's educational videos on the internet about it and mm -hmm. uh, signage so we're hoping that it can be a, a easy transition for everybody. So November 4th through the 6th. What time do you open? What <laughs> can so you get the, there? Yeah, the Friday is 5 to 10 and Saturday is 12 to 10 and Sunday is 12 to 6. And uh, on Sunday, actually, all Hollerbach businesses close at 6 p.m. because my entire staff of 160 people have basically been working 15 hours um, a day for three days. <laughs> so um, we uh, close everything down at 6 o'clock, shut down the Civic Center, shut down all the businesses, and we're actually having a party at Wild Wild West End, and Pablo's making us a taco bar. Oh, so awesome. we can kind of celebrate with everybody. And, and yeah. even though, like, I love the guest reaction to Oktoberfest and you know we do it for that camaraderie for that marketing value and everything I love the camaraderie from our staff because mm -hmm. it's like a badge of honor like you know we survived Oktoberfest <laughs> and the feeling you get creating something that attracts 20,000 people is just really cool yeah. you know and it's not something everybody has a chance to be a part of right. so that kind of the, the release that we need <laughs> right at the end of that weekend is, is yeah and the too. appreciation your employees must feel from you, so you know, the owner to 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 say thank you like that it goes a long way and not to mention our volunteers too we have 96 volunteer shifts over uh, five hour All right. shifts uh, to make that happen so in addition to my staff and I, I did see like a comment on Facebook when we asked for volunteers like oh you know you don't pay your staff enough and I was like I do too I just need more people yeah. <laughs> it's like it takes so much to make these events yeah. happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 I mean, whenever you say Sanford, people, first thing they say is Hollerbacks. Have you been to the German restaurant? Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, that's just, it's like we go hand in hand, the city of Sanford and the German restaurant. I gotta ask you a question about Oktoberfest. Do you know a little bit about the holiday itself or why they celebrate like they do? What does it mean? Sure. So it, it's actually celebrated in, in September in Germany, and it was initially the celebration of King Ludwig's wedding. And so it was one of those things like, hey, let's throw a big party for this really awesome wedding. And then everybody's like, well, why don't we just celebrate this all the time? You know, <laughs> it's an anniversary of this marriage and just, you know, the people loved it and kind of the start of their, you know, harvest and fall season. So it was initially a, a celebration of a wedding that just kind of carried on and became a huge tourist attraction. And of course, yeah. now they start um, Oktoberfest in September still, but they'll run it through um, almost till November because they have um, Kris Kringle Mart season too for their November, December season. And um, I know that they had two years that they missed with COVID as well. So it was, uh, I think this was the first year back for them coming out of the pandemic. So it was a very popular destination and people were excited yeah. to have, have that back. And that in Germany, that you said that was in Munich is where it started? Yeah, and like they, they have it everywhere, but initially in Munich. In yeah. Munich. And oh. those, the infrastructure and logistics for the tents that they set up is absolutely crazy. And the technology they've had too about uh, filling up beer from special cups through the bottom mm -hmm. and how you carry them. Like there's a lot of cool videos out there about all the things that go behind creating these pop-up festivals okay. that last for months yeah yeah well that's it's well, one thing i especially like is is obviously sanford's known for street parties but yours is still very family friendly you have a nice kids zone and it, and it's a way to and give your your whole family children included an introduction to other cultures and sure. and the way your your staff is dressed and interact and the music and it's a truly a, a cultural experience that all, all ages can enjoy. So we were just um, celebrating with some, some two local residents, and his birthday happens to be in October, so he always has mm -hmm. an Oktoberfest-themed party. And I was talking to all the kids, and they all have dirndls and lederhosen, and a lot of them will pass them down when their kids grow out of them, oh, and then it cool. turns into somebody else's you know outfit. But um, one of their, their daughter got a new uh, dirndl for, a, I think it was a birthday gift, and she's like, oh, a new German dress. And I'm just thinking about all these kids growing up in Sanford that just think this <laughs> right? is just like normal, you know, <laughs> right? but it is like a cultural experience uh -huh. that is kind of special from here. So I can't wait till they're like older, like talking to other kids like, oh, your town didn't have a giant German party and you don't have your own set of journals and later <laughs> in right? your closet, you know? So it, it is introducing uh -huh. something special to people. Mm -hmm. and. And I do, and we can't do that without our partners too. Mm -hmm. Ladies Three Two Seven runs our kids mm -hmm. zones and our vendors, so it's another way the event is giving back to the community already. Because mm -hmm. you know we don't take any of those vendor fees; it all goes to them, so that they can raise money and do other things. 
and also takes the load and stress off of running giant events like this when you have great partners that you trust that can handle those things. Mm-hmm. So yeah. and we use them for ev- everything. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, oh, they're great. Sure. So easy yeah. to work with. And, you check and out all those vi- vendors are micro businesses in yeah. Sanford. So it's really important to support them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's true. Really true. So. That's this weekend. It's happening. It's it's well, right we around have, the corner. We have a couple other things happening um, this weekend. We have Golden Age Games, mm-hmm. which are our senior games. So that's bringing in a lot of people from um, outside. We've gotten a couple of phone calls like, how do we get in? Because Hollerbacks has 2nd Street, and your downtown is flooded. And I'm like, no, 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 no. 1st <laughs> no, no. Street's wide open. Hollerbacks is down at the Civic Center. You can um, easily get through town this weekend for Golden Age Games and still... Um, enjoy Oktoberfest. And yeah. also if you're in Seminole County, you can uh, do early voting. We have a polling mm-hmm. station at the library right across from uh, where the festival's at. So definitely uh, take that time to check out your candidates and go down and vote. Mm-hmm. We have like less than 20% voter turnout, so I'd like to see our county represent and get that number a Absolutely. little higher. Absolutely. <laughs> we can do better than that in Seminole <laughs> County. All right. Yes. So. Well, any last words? Um, well, when I wanted to touch Jennifer. base. Um, I'll, I'll come back next week and go over um, the November events. Um, but we have so many events through the rest of the year. It's certainly holiday season in the city of Sanford. Uh, we were just chatting um, off air about every weekend there is an event. Um, so we look forward to seeing you and yours uh, down here. Uh, this Friday, November 11th, we will be having our Veterans Day ceremony. Unfortunately, Veterans Memorial Park received um, severe damage with the flooding, but we are proceeding. We're putting a stage in the um, middle of Park Avenue, backing up to the roundabout, and uh, putting up a tent for our guest, and we are proceeding uh, to honor our veterans. Excellent. So yeah. we've got one heck of a great week. Yeah, yeah, we do. And it's like, it's uh, we can't, I'm staring at a list in front of, for folks that are listening, it, it, there's a slew of events <laughs> yes, happening. Yes, 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 yes. In, in Samford, and um, this the city knows how to do an event. And of course, we have these wonderful partners here that provide such great fun and building memories and happiness with yourself and your community and and family. So come down to Samford this weekend, Christina. Any, any uh, last. To- and during Oktoberfest, you can also visit the Audi booth because they'll be uh, displaying their winning trophy for Soap and Sudge, which is November 20th as well. And I have to say, obviously, Oktoberfest is my favorite. Soap and Sudge is my favorite <laughs> event to go to. We literally find couches on the side of a road and soup them up and race them down the street. And uh, Hollerbox is also the crowd favorite champion three years running. Audi has been the race champion for quite a while. But um, another great great event to go to. It's free to attend unless you want to buy the VIP tickets and hang out in the pit with all the couch racers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely something again weird and unique. Uh, yeah. Some fun for everybody. And uh, it's definitely it's definitely a good day. So yeah. I look couch to racing. It. Where can you where can you beat that? <laughs> right? except, yeah. except with the golf cart yeah. racing. <laughs> Carts and kegs. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yes. That was interesting. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a challenge. But these two women have have been eating their Wheaties, right? Both yeah. of you. <laughs> <laughs> going to be nonstop preparing for this. Jennifer, you're always on site when these events happen in the city. Um, thanks for all that you do. And Christina, I mean, you're a wonderful volunteer. Oh, it's and our, it's you our downtown businesses. We, yeah. we've got it. We just, our downtown businesses just are so creative and they just, they, it's a uh, side note, and I'm going <laughs> to share it with the public. I was, um, sharing emails with the city of Eustis, Oakland, um, Tavares today, and they were talking about these small pop-up tents, and they'll give them some barricades, and they try to participate, and they don't charge them, and there's no permit fees, and but they're just so happy to have them, and I'm like, oh. like they are so desperate to create something that Sanford has, and the reason we can do it is because our business owners are just yes people to the city to the public yeah. to those other nonprofits. we just say yes we make it happen yeah and, and i think it's so i'm so grateful to hollerbacks um west end um henry's depot there's so many jim yeah. Fardy's doing a whole bunch with really micro businesses there's just literally across the board yeah i think it's great the support the mm-hmm. support city ca- community community city that we see amongst mm-hmm. the businesses that i think are, is really key to a, right yeah, <laughs> yeah to the success here so 
We're our trying to say the department and the parks department have transformed downtown oh following all that flooding. They yeah, are the hard just workers. working themselves. Well, and I, I was saying to to the the parks and rec and and the civic center like the whole city is, is what they're responsible for post hurricane and I'm over here going to Oktoberfest Civic Center and they're still <laughs> able to answer me and help and it's like mm -hmm. I know I'm not the only thing you guys got going on but I feel like <laughs> sometimes they still treat me that way and I, I love how responsive they've been too about making this work and yeah, it, really, it really is special yeah mm -hmm. well thank you Christina <laughs> Christina Hollerback live and in person mm -hmm. on the San Francisco podcast the busiest person <laughs> yeah and, and thank you for taking time out of no your way. busy day yeah. And Jennifer Brooks claw clawing your way f away from the computer <laughs> to come upstairs, you know, so you can share um, information about our special events. But thanks, ladies. And it, what we're trying to say to our listeners is come on to Stanford this weekend. Get down here. You will have a fantastic time. And not, not only this weekend, but every weekend. Let's check our website out, sanfordfl.gov forward slash events. Go to Christina, the website again for you. Hollerbox.com slash Oktoberfest. There you go. Thank you for listening. Get those bands. Get them mm -hmm. preloaded. Yep. This is Lisa Holder, Chief Communications and Cultural Affairs Administrator for the City of Sanford. You're listening to Sanford Says. You can subscribe to this podcast wherever you, sub you find your favorite podcast and on the city website at sanfordfl.gov. Thanks for listening. Until next time, come on down to Sanford. Bye. <laughs>